So I'm going I'm to talk some about uh, living where you want to live and working in the technology uh, kind of business. Um, and uh, if you want to live anywhere, why wouldn't you? So my talk is uh, how to leave high-tech cube land. Even if you work for a large company, you could do this. Or in fact, escape from the belly of the beast even without having to leave that nice, soft, comfortable belly. So I'm going to talk about some challenges. And, and the, the first is, uh, is one of fulfillment. Why would you want to live anywhere? And contrary to what you may have been told, fulfillment does not come from having more monitors on your desk. Even though that's good, but it may come from being able to live anywhere you want to live. Now, if you, if you work with stuff, if you work with matter and things, you probably have to live close to where you work. But if you work with ideas or concepts or photographs and things like that, you can live anywhere. So if you could live anywhere, where would you live? So let me talk about uh, some of the challenges. The first challenge is a challenge of misconception. Most people, when I talk to this, they, they, they say, oh, work remotely. Well, I just need a modem and some wires and things like that, and I'm there, right? They, they think that it's mostly a technology problem. And in fact, that's not really true. It's really a people problem, and the people that matter the most are the people you work with, the company that you work with and things. And the sad, sad truth is that your company is never going to beg you to move slopeside. They are not going to ask you to move where it's going to be about you. You're going to have to decide that this is what you want and make it happen. Letting go. So when we moved here in 2000, I made the decision that if that meant leaving my job, that was OK. And you'll have to let go of the things that don't matter as much to you in order to do something you really want to do, like living where you want to live. Other people say, you know, if I work remotely, if I work from home, I'd never get in my bathroom. I'd be shopping all day and things like that. Um, and the, the, the truth of it is that, that people that work remotely tend to work more because work's right there sort of thing. But it's, it's a common misconception. You'll give up some things, um, things like friends, things like, <laughs> things like places you like to go, th things like, you know, good food and things. I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area. There are all these great restaurants. I moved to Steamboat. There were no Indian restaurants. Now, there is one. Eh? Uh, a quick story, uh, colleagues and friends. Uh, how do you keep a crab in a box? You put a bunch of other crabs in the box, and if the crab tries to crawl out, they pull him back in. And so it's real, your, your friends will push your buttons. It's really kind of amazing. A lot of people think it's about bandwidth. So here's how much bandwidth I had when I moved to Steamboat. In perspective, here's the iPhone 3G. Here's it with respect to DSL. And here's it with respect to how much bandwidth I've got now. But the point is, this is what I started with for a year when I moved to Steamboat. So bandwidth is not going to be the thing that limits you. All right, so we need a little bit of technology. And we need a lot of wanting to live where you want to live. So now let me go through a few tips and things that will help you figure out how to do this. And the first tip number one is you attach a fire hose to your manager. You have to tell your manager more stuff than they ever wanted to know about what you're working on. They have to know more about what you're doing than the people that report to them that sit right next to them. That, that makes your manager comfortable with the situation. Your colleagues, you're not going to be bumping into them in the hallway anymore. And so you've got to be doing, you have to be a master of the virtual water cooler, what I call it. So you call them on the phone and talk to them about something. They say, oh, I'm glad you called because I was wanting to talk to you about this thing. It makes them feel comfortable. You've got to give it up about self-promotion. For the past several years, I've written my own performance evaluation, annual performance evaluation. My, my manager edits it a little bit, but I write it. So you, so you just got to get over that part of it. Now, there are opportunities that come up, and you got to take them. So a few years ago, a manager came in several levels above me, and he wanted to connect with the staff and things like this. So he sent out this note about how this Linux penguin had been stolen out of his office by kidnappers, by international terrorists, and things like this. And they'd sent him a ransom note. So I sent a note back saying, I've seen him. He's in a steamboat. I saw kidnappers. They were on the gondola. And they, you know, they were picked up by a helicopter sort of thing. And it, it connected. You know, he thought that was great. The other, rest, of my, rest of the team could see that I was uh, still around and, and things like that. And lastly, I'll say that when you're with your, with your colleagues face to face, you've got to work it. You really got to work it. So here I am at a, at a, at a conference. I'm, I'm talking to Stan. He's one of the top five research scientists in my company. And Bob, who's a, who was on the board of directors at the time. Now, I mentioned that when I started doing this in 2000, at the time, it was tolerated. My company tolerated it. Tons of paperwork for me to make this happen and stuff, but they were kind of OK with it. But today, this is what corporations want. They want you to be off premises and independent and doing things. And in fact, the, the quote that I loved out of one of these uh, articles was, the professional class is going Bedouin. 
So you just off doing your own thing and being productive. So really, th this is the way that things are going, and much more so than it was when I moved in 2000. So the, the message I want to leave you with is that if, you, if it would really satisfy your soul to live where you want to live, then there's stuff to support you, and you should go for it.